In this video, we're gonna be looking at two blocks that are being pulled by a string that are also attached by a string in the middle as well. We're gonna solve for the acceleration of the whole system, each block, and the force of tension of this string holding the two blocks together. So the first thing we're gonna to do to solve for our acceleration is treat this like one big system. And I'm gonna treat the five and three kilogram block like one eight kilogram block. As usual, we wanna analyze our object by drawing in all of our forces. We have the force of gravity down and the normal force up, which are equal and opposite of each other, which isn't the case all the time, but since they're um, an object sitting on a flat surface with no other forces in the vertical direction, they are equal and opposite of one another. Um, in addition, we have this force of tension to the right and the force of kinetic friction opposing the slide to the left. So we're gonna take a look at the sum of our forces in the X and Y direction first and go ahead and draw out those formulas. All right, in the y direction, we don't have quite as much to look at because we have no movement or acceleration in the vertical direction. So we have the normal force minus the force of gravity equals m times a, which equals zero. So fn would equal fg if you added fg to both sides. In the x direction, we have the force of tension, which is this big, um, well, not so big, 35 Newton force to the right. And we have the force of friction opposing that slide, and that equals the mass times acceleration. But since we're looking at both objects as one big system, we have eight kilograms in total with some kind of acceleration. We do know the force of tension is 35 Newtons. And the force of kinetic friction is always mu times normal force. So mu, the coefficient of kinetic friction, is 0 0.3, according to our setup right here. And then our Fn is equal to our Fg. So Fg is Mg, which is mass times 9.8. If we take 35 minus the product of these, the product of these is 23.52 Newtons. That equals 11.48 Newtons total equals the eight kilograms times the acceleration. Divide both sides by eight. And then we have an acceleration of 1.44 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration of the entire system. So if you were asked for the acceleration for the five kilogram or three kilogram block, both of them would have an acceleration of 1.44 meters per second squared. Now what we can do is if we analyze each of the boxes on their own as their own separate systems, we have the three kilogram block that has an FT Going to the right, we'll call this FT1. It has the force of tension pulling it backwards. We'll call it FT2. Force of kinetic friction because it's sliding. And then we have our vertical forces again, which aren't as significant. Force of gravity down, normal force up, which are going to be the same value opposite directions. For our second block, we have this same force from this string FT2, the tension, except this one is pulling it to the right. We have the force of kinetic friction opposing the slide. And then we also have the normal force and the force of gravity. That are equal and opposite to one another. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the sum of forces in the x direction for the three kilogram block and the five kilogram block. Then we can go ahead and solve for the FT2, the tension between each of these strings. All right, so I have the sum of forces in the X direction for each of them, and where our original acceleration comes into play is on the right side of the formula where we have M times A for each of the individual blocks. So that's gonna be helpful into it for us um, to have all of our values on the right side of the equal sign. Now, if you wanted to find FT2, you wouldn't necessarily have to solve both of these formulas. Um, both of them, the FT2 should theoretically come out to the same exact number. If I were to choose one, I would probably choose this formula in blue only because it has less variables in it. Um, other than that, they're really not too much different in difficulty um, for solving for FT2. So let me go ahead and solve for FT2 down here. So that's our main unknown variable. And then we're gonna subtract the force of friction, which is the mu times the normal force. Remember the normal force is the same as the FG, which is mass times 9.8. And that equals mass times the acceleration, which comes out to about 7.2 Newtons. So then we have our FT2 minus the product of these numbers, which is 14.7 equal to 7.2. Add 14.7 to both sides. And we have a force of tension of 21.9 newtons. So if we just wanted the force of tension of this string in between the three and five kilogram block, we'd already be done. Um, but let, let me go ahead and show you um, how the numbers are gonna work out with this formula too, and then we'll see if we get the same value. So we have the FT1, actually we already have the FT1. It's 35 newtons minus the FT2, that's our unknown minus coefficient of kinetic friction times Fn, which is the same as Fg, which is mass times 9.8. So now if we multiply some of our values, we have 35 minus Ft2 minus 8.82 equals 4.32 newtons on the right side. So if I add 8.82 to both sides and then subtract 35 from both sides, I would have minus FT2 equals negative 21.9 newtons rounded off the negatives would drop out. And then I would get an FT2 of 21.9 Newtons, which is gonna be the same number as the one that I got earlier. So when taking a look at a problem like this, it's beneficial to take a look at it as one big system so that we can solve for the acceleration. And that acceleration was extremely helpful in plugging in over here and here to solve for different values, such as our FT2, the force of tension of this string in the middle. I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.